morning. I pray that you all had a wonderful Christmas, a good time with your family, time to reflect upon the reason for Christmas, Jesus Christ, celebration of his birth and his coming here. I hope we all took that opportunity to do so. This morning, it's interesting that Irene started with that song because I would like to take a little bit of time and reflect back on this past year. Usually during this time of year, we work diligently on doing that. We look back and reflect on the previous calendar year. We take stock of things that we've accomplished. We also take stock of things maybe we wanted to, but didn't. We look fondly on our favorite memories, our times with our family and friends, special moments that we got to share with loved ones in our lives. We use this time to remember those who've gone on before us. Sad because they're not here to celebrate with us. But at the same time, excited because where they reside now is a whole lot better than anything this world has to offer. Amen. It's common for us during this time of year to talk about our New Year's resolution. And I know some of y'all really like that word. So maybe it's a specific goal or a plan. Maybe it is a resolution that you're looking at for 2020. Whatever noun you choose to use about looking ahead. The point is that after we take stock of what we have or have not done this past year, we get a chance to make choices and decisions about what we would like to do or accomplish for the next 12 months. Perhaps you have a health goal. Maybe you'd like to lose some weight, eat better, eat healthier. That seems to be a pretty common goal when I talk to people. Losing weight's a common goal. Maybe one of your goals this year is to take a cooking class so you learn how to use all those healthy vegetables that we don't touch in the supermarket, right? Maybe there's a concert or a play that you'd really like to attend. Maybe, like many that I have talked to, it's about purging your life this year. Purging your home of excess items. Things that are still stuck up in that hallway closet that you haven't looked at in a decade. Maybe you're purging your life of extracurricular activities. Looking at and focusing on the things that really matter in your life and get rid of all the extras. I have a friend who every year sets goals to the number of books to read for the year. That's a lofty goal because reading is not one of my favorite things to do. But maybe you have a favorite author somebody that you've been meaning to catch up with. Maybe it's volunteering. Perhaps you have looked at your life and decided you need to volunteer more, put in some more hours, looking at different organizations. This list could go on and on and on of all the things that we choose or choose not to do. The, possibilities for our lives are endless. When I think of making plans or goals, I also think about some of the characters from the Bible. You see, there's a whole lot of examples of people who made plans. One of the people I like to think about is Noah. Now, Noah received plans from God on how to, how to put together the ark. But in order to do that, Noah had to have goals in mind. There were only certain places that you could gather gopher wood. 
Where would it be available? How long would it take to transport? Who is going to help? How are we going to get that accomplished? I'm sure there were many plans that Noah had to put into place. He couldn't build the top deck first and then somehow put the bottom of the boat underneath it. He had to have a plan in place. He had to have daily accomplishments, daily goals to make the ark in its final construct. Or maybe let's think about the people that built the tabernacle. The plans again came from God, this time to Moses. Then afterwards, Moses tasked the craftsmen that were appointed for this task. The craftsmen then had the knowledge and the understanding to make plans to figure out which section and what needed to be accomplished first so that they could build upon and ultimately build the tabernacle. You couldn't, again, start with the roof and then make the walls. <coughs> How about King David? He wanted to build a temple. He was all excited about building a temple for God. But this time, God had other plans. Through Nathan the prophet, David was told that it was his heir that would complete the temple and not him. So in this case, we see that a man had plans, but God changed them. What about a New Testament character? In the book of Acts, we find a man named Saul. He too had some plans. His plans were to destroy the way and all of its followers. He even went to the high priest and received letters to the synagogue of Damascus. Now these letters would have been an explanation from the high priest to those in charge of the synagogue as to what Saul's plans were, what his intentions were, and then an endorsement from the high priest and a blessing from them to continue this work. Hmm. But it seems like God had other plans in mind. Here we have God interceding. Paul had a remarkable transformation on that road to Damascus. And instead of fighting for the way, instead of fighting the way, he fought for the followers of the way. God changed his mind. Sometimes God changes our mind in hard ways. There's an old saying that says, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. In each of these cases, we find that if the plans were man-made and not centered on God, God shook it up a little bit. In the case of Saul, Paul, he was shaken up considerably. Not just a little bit. He was shaken up a whole lot. At this time of year, when we're busy making plans, God reminded me once again that without him at the center, without him in the center of my life, in the center of all my plans, my plans were nothing. If I make a plan not centered on God, it is merely something that occupies my space and time. It's not really effective. I might feel accomplished, but nothing's really going to come from it. It'll be for me, but not for anybody else. Today, as we're getting ready to roll over that calendar, we need to be reminded that as we make our plans, our goals, and our resolutions, that we need to seek God's guidance, God's wisdom.
wisdom and God's discernment. Are these the plans that God has for our lives? Are these things that we have in mind adding value to the kingdom of turn with me in your scripture. Proverbs 16. Proverbs chapter 16. Verses 1 through 3. It says this. The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the Spirit. Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. What does that mean? What does that mean? What is God telling us here? The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer is from the tongue, is on the tongue of the Lord. I think of David in this instance. His plans were awesome. He wanted to build this amazing temple to God, have a permanent residence where God could reside. He was overly excited about these plans and building this house, but God said, no. You're not it. It's going to be your heir that's going to take care of this. The answer of the tongue is from the Lord. When we pray earnestly from our heart to ask for God's guidance and wisdom, he will give us that answer. But we can't make a plan Go off and conduct it and expect God to bless it. <laughs> it don't work that way. And all too often in our lives what we do is we go, you know what, God, I think I'm going to do this. I think this is a great idea. I think the consequences of this action are going to be all of these things. But we don't see the whole picture. God does. And God says, no. We need to seek God first and then go forward. I love verse 2. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. How many times have we thought we had the answer to everything? We knew the solution, obviously. Right? I know I've done that. Says, but the Lord weighs the spirit. The Lord knows your true intention. The Lord knows your heart. What you're really in it for. I think a lot of times, especially with this verse, I think about the people that do wonderful acts of kindness out in the community, but then have to videotape it and display it to the world. Now, in and of itself, is that a bad thing? No, it's not. And I'm not condemning them for doing that. But at the same time, if you have to video and show the world how awesome and kind you are, are you doing these acts of kindness for the right intention? Lord weighs the spirit. Verse 3 says, commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. This is a hard one. Even for pastors. Because what we think we're doing is all this amazing work for the kingdom of God. But are we really? Are we really? Is 
all this stuff that we're doing adding to the kingdom of God, or are we just busy being busy, taking up our time, not seeking God's guidance on what we really should be doing and concentrating on? Because we think, you catch what I said? Because we think, As we enter a new calendar year, and as so many of us are establishing things in our life, things that we want to accomplish for the next 12 months, I want to invite each and every one of you to seek God's will first. First of all, I would like you to be invited to join me in reading scripture this year. I think it's important that we do so. If you look on your calendar that you got, the very first top, there's an app on your phone that you can download called Read Scripture. Pretty simple. I think you'll be able to find it. It's called Read Scripture. It's done by the Bible Project. And if we start together on January 1st, by December 31st, if we read every day, you and I together will read the entire Bible in one year. I invite you to join me. Download that app and let's start January 1 on the solid foundation that we need to have. God's Word. I also invite you to join me February 26th and we're going to have more information about that. It is a day of prayer and fasting, denomination wide. February 26th. Please put that on your calendar. Let's pray for our denomination and our churches. I would like you to join me in seeking God's will for our lives, for our direction personally, but our direction for this church where God wants to take us, what things we need to be involved in as a church, praying together will give us that answer. The word tells us that we have not because we ask not. So let's start off the new year on the right foot by asking. With that, I want to tell you that on New Year's Day, Wednesday, January 1st, our church house will be open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. to anyone and everyone that would like to come and start the year in prayer. Amen. Here and Madisonville both. Okay. I encourage you to seek God's will for your life and for your direction. I invite you to come here Wednesday and pray. Start your new year on the foundation of Jesus Christ with his guidance, not ours. Let us close in prayer today. Gracious God, blessings that you have given us are beyond measure. When we really stop and take stock of all the things that you have done in our life, God, they're immeasurable. It's innumerable. We have no words for everything that you have done for us. Lord, please forgive us Forgive us when we don't follow your direction. Forgive us when we don't follow your guidance. God, help us to start over. Help us to start anew with you. Let us start by asking you first where you want our lives and the direction our lives to be taken. We love you.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.